I like to sew, but I really don't have the time. That's one of the most common comments I hear from you, our viewers. I often have the same sentiments. To change the way you look at the sewing process, I decided to design projects that are cut from fabric rectangles and squares, streamlining the sewing without compromising the look. The Travel Trio, a Weekender Tote, Cosmetic Bag, and Luggage Saddle Bag are all made using comparable sewing steps, straight stitching plus double-sided fabric. So simple with rectangles and squares, that's what's next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effect threads, because creativity is never black and white. Koala Studios, fine sewing furniture, custom built in America. Clover, making a difference in sewing, quilting, crafting, and needle arts for over 30 years. Amazing designs and Class A needles. When planning this TV program, I decided to make projects that started very simple, and each technique I showed you would be applied to the next project. And so we're starting with something basic, the cosmetic bag. In this cosmetic bag, we have a specialty zipper put in with special t stops so that you don't have a bump at the end of the zipper. There's a pocket and a, so, a very easy gusset to place in this cosmetic bag. So lots of cosmetics can be filled in this area. It may seem simple, but that's what this program is all about. Double-sided fabric is what we're working with in cutting rectangles from the shapes. 13 by 20 is the bag size with a pocket that's 13 by 6, and you're going to cut one each. You see that I have the grain lines along the pockets because with double-sided fabric, it's quilted with usually a small print on one side, a larger print on the other, and the batting between, and the quilting is done in a diamond shape so that the diamond shape the lengthwise grain is with the diamond, the elongation of the diamond. So you might want to make sure that you're cutting it with the correct grain line. Simple, fast. Just these two rectangles of fabric. And then we're going to be using a lot of ribbon. Five eighths of an inch wide grow grain ribbon. Get it to coordinate, complement your fabric. And you'll see it me using this several times throughout the day. So for this pocket, Half-inch seam allowances work out well for the pocket, and we just pressed up the hem of the pocket, pressed under the top pocket, and then placed grow grain ribbon across this edge. And after you have stitched it straight down, then sew along the lower edge of the, of the pocket. So it's pre-shaped, it has lining on it because it's double-faced, and it's now ready to place on the cosmetic bag. So you have the pocket created, and we're going to just going to measure down two inches. So can't be much simpler than that. Measure down two inches, and you'd stitch around the sides, the lower hem, and the other side. Presto, one step of the project completed. In my next sample, and my life is in samples, you'll see another pocket that has been placed on, and then we need these little tabs on the side. Used a different grow grain ribbon and folded the little pieces in half, and you measure, or you eyeball, which I'm doing right now, a half of an inch above the pocket, and place the ribbon as pull tabs. So it makes it easier to open up the bag. So you can just base those down or, or pin them into place. Now we're gonna work with the zipper, and I'm gonna spend some time on the zipper because the zipper is going to be used in the weekender tote, as well as the luggage saddle bag. Now, you can buy zippers that are the right size, like a 14-inch zipper would be perfect, or zippers on a roll where they have multiple tabs so you can just cut the length that you need. And that's what I used for this project. And if you, when you cut out the zipper, make sure that you pin or bar tack at the ends so that you're not going to pull that tab off of the zipper tape itself. So I'm going to place the zipper along the top edge and then the ends are going to be covered with fabric. And let's just take a close-up look at what we're, I'm talking about. 
rather than the zipper tape going all the way to the end, there's fabric in this area so that when you're sewing the seam, you're not going over the zipper teeth, you're going over fabric and you, it makes it so much faster to do and you don't have a little lump at the end of the zipper. This program is called So Simple with Rectangles and Squares. So you can cut now three inch squares of the leftover fabric. And this is leftover from the quilted fabric. We just clipped between the layers to separate. We only need a single layer of fabric. Place the zipper down so that the tab is down. And then you're going to place the piece of fabric let me put it right size up, so around at very adjacent to the edge of the fabric of the cosmetic tote. And then you wrap it around the end and pin. You do the same on the other side and I have a contrasting color here. Wrap it around the edge and pin. Now the great hint comes next and that is we're going to use a pen and a one inch mark and we'd mark with a pin or a marking pen one inch from the edge and sew through all the layers. It's just a quick way of measuring and on this sample I've done that stitching and then cut, trim off the excess tape. And there you have the zipper end and you do the same on the other zipper and this allows the zipper to fit perfectly in this length. Now you meet right sides together, the right side of the zipper to the right side of the top of the cosmetic bag and stitch. And here you can see that I'm sewing that edge, sewing it, and then if you'd like, you can top stitch it down. So here we have it top stitched into place. Do the same thing on the other side. Meet the top of the zipper to the top of the case and stitch with a fourth of an inch seam. Now we're going to center the zipper. It, I have the zipper open. We center it at the top and sew the side seam. And as I lay this down, you'll see that the side seam has been stitched on this side. And then find that pocket, wherever that pocket is, and I can feel it right there. Just fold up the edge and stitch in the gusset. That's the gusset. Just stitch it down just by folding it up to meet the pocket. When you turn it right side out, ta-da, you have a cosmetic bag with a zipper specially made pocket and gusset. Now that you know how to make a cosmetic bag, apply many of the same sewing steps to create a weekender tote. It's a supersized bag with addition of sturdy straps and double pockets. When you take a look at the two bags, obviously the same fabrics, but there are many comparable techniques. The zipper along the top is made in the same manner as the cosmetic bag, little pull tabs. There are pockets. The gussets are done in the same manner, only different sizes, of course. The main change is going to be the strap, this continuous strap that goes around the bag along the bottom to make it sturdy and for easy carrying. And it's a fun project to make, much like the cosmetic bag. So we'll need the same type of fabric, the double-sided quilted fabric, a yard and an eighth to make this bag. 23 by 39 is the measurement of the bag. And two pockets are cut, 8 by 11. So those are the rectangles. Left from the yardage of fabric, you'll have lengthwise fabric and cut three 2-inch strips. This is going to be for the strap. Three 2-inch strips from the yard and an eighth of fabric. I already showed you how to work with the pocket, so you're going to make the pocket in the same manner as I detailed earlier, folding under the top edge and adding ribbon and then pressing under the lower edge. The, both pockets are placed five inches down from the top and I placed a pin at the center mark, so I fold it in half, mark the center of the pocket, mark the center of the bag, and then just line these two up five inches down and you'd sew along the bottom and the sides. Of course, leave the top open. And this was made just the same manner as the initial pocket. And you'd place another pocket at the opposite end. After sewing on both pockets, da da da, we have it already done here. We're going to make the straps. Now, these straps are going to be separated, the fabric separated removing the batting. You can save the lower layer for another project and then seam 
the separated fabrics end to end. So you're going to sew these together end to end so that you have one continuous strip. And it measures approximately 120 inches. You don't have to be exact on this, just approximately, as I mentioned. So you've sewn them into continuous strips and then add interfacing or a strap interfacing. This one is perforated and I've started already to press it to the wrong side of the fabric and as I reach the starting point I just overlap some of the interfacing and then press along the perforations and it easily presses or if you used traditional interfacing just measure so that you have a one inch finished strip so fold the ends to the middle is basically what's going to happen now you have one big circle of a strap and we're going to need ribbon and let me just show you on the bag what's needed because you want some nice finish to the strap on the inside we cover those raw edges with ribbon but rather than attaching the ribbon all the way around you don't need the bulk where it's attached to the bag we just need it in the handle area so to accomplish this fold your strap in half and place a pin mark at each half mark so what I did is just it's a long strap so I just folded it in half and marked the pins then cut two lengths of ribbon that are 33 inches each and also mark a pin mark at the center place the two centers together and then to edge stitch the ribbon to the strap and here's just a close-up I told you it was straight stitching stitch on both sides of the ribbon to attach it to the strap so you have the ribbon at each end and then I've marked it in another quarter mark I fold it in half again and placed two more pins this will help me in the placement of of the strap on the bag so here we have the bag and so we need to mark the center of this bag so we fold it in half so there's a lot of folding and marking so I'll place a pin mark at this area and then the quarter mark without the ribbon is going to be placed adjacent to the center mark and I'm just kind of approximating right now and I line these two marks up the center and the quarter mark and then you do the same on the other side now you have to make certain that you're not going to twist this ribbon or the strap excuse me around so that's lying flat but then you again pin the two down so I have a strap let me raise this up a strap going on either side of the pocket and you'll find in the instructions that I have this measured seven inches from the side so exactly seven inches from the side is where that strap would go and you top stitch this down and here's a close-up of top stitching around the edges and you stitch until one inch above the pocket so that we have the strap attached all the way around to give it security then you attach the ribbon you create the gusset in the same way folding it up to meet the pocket and you have a weekender tote for ease of travel, make a saddle bag for your carry-on luggage or rolling case. Two sizes of bags are attached together with connector straps. When not using this handy accessory on your luggage, zip the bags together and it's a handy shoulder tote. Now we're progressing, changing the cosmetic bag, making the sizes slightly different, but yet there are some similarities. On the luggage saddle bag, there are zippers, there are pull tabs, but the zipper, as on the cosmetic bag, is recessed slightly. It's placed down so that you can get access it much more readily. And the connector straps connect the larger bag in the front to a smaller bag in the back. And the bag in the back is smaller or shorter so that when you're using it, it doesn't drag on the floor. The shoulder strap is connected at the connector straps, or sometimes I call them bridges, between the two pieces. When you take this off, there's one large zipper, a heavy duty zipper at the top that you just zip closed, I'll just zip partially closed, and then it becomes a shoulder bag. I think this is a fun way of creating an accessory, as I mentioned earlier, and it's not very difficult to do at all. 
This is called So Simple with Rectangles and Squares. We're using more rectangles than squares in this program. But the shapes for the two bags, we have pocket, a pocket that's 13 by 6, on the smaller bag that's 13 by 24. And then the larger bag, we have a small pocket and a longer bag, 13 by 30. If you had a larger tote, you can make both bags the same size. It's totally up to you. Placing the pocket on, inserting the zipper, working with the little tabs, the same process. But this time, as I showed you, you're not going to have the zipper at the top, but it's going to be re recessed by two inches. So measure down two inches or up two inches from the zipper and then place pins in this area. The little tabs on the sides can go right across from the zipper or right on the zipper area because that will make it easier when you're unzipping and zipping to pull on these little tabs. Now turn this unit right sides together and here's my unit that has been stitched along the side. Now take a close look at this tab that's been added to the zipper. The zipper teeth are out of this area so that when you're serging or sewing you're not going to go through that bulk of the zipper. So that's a good reason to add that little accent to the piece and besides it looks nice. And then after you stitch the seam then fold up the lower edge to create the zipper finding the edge of the pocket. You can't really see it but you can certainly feel it and then restitch that seam. You're going to make two bags the same manner, but they're going to be different sizes. Let me turn this correctly. There we go. And when you sew those side seams, make sure you keep the zipper open. Now you only do that once because uh, you can't get in it very easily if you have the zipper closed when you turn, try to turn it right side out. So now, here we go. We're just going to get it turned and you can see how this looks and let me try to get the points out. Whoop, I'm missing my tool. A tool to get the points out. Here we go. So you have two bags, different sizes, and now to connect them together. So here is my larger bag and my smaller bag. They're all in, they'll be marked in the same manner, folded in half at the top and place a pin. So you need the center marks. And then you're going to use, instead of just a dressmaker zipper, a standard zipper, use a separating zipper for coats, 24 inches long. And we added ribbon at the ends to make it look nice and also to keep the tape together at the opened end. This zipper also has a marking at the center, folded in half and placed a mark. Now I kind of liken the assembly of this like making a bookshelf. It's very basic. You stack things together. It goes together quite easily. It's very visual. The connector straps are what ne are needed next. They're two inches by six inch strips of fabric that have the interfacing pressed. You fold along the perforations and then stitch along the edges. Here's a D-ring that I use and then here you can see to keep that D-ring in place I'm stitching along the edge close to the D-ring. Now here's the connector strap. I pull off the little basting tape that I have, a double-sided basting tape, and place the connector strap th three and a half inches from the center. So I have the pins already placed there. They're placed in that area and then the zipper matching the center point gets tucked down. All these layers are going to be stitched together. The zipper, the connecting strap, here's a close-up of top stitching, the layers. Stitch securely at each end. I usually do two rows of top stitching. So you add the back of the bag in the same manner by centering the connectors, sewing across the top, and then adding a shoulder strap. Lola Jenkins, thread artist, is today's Nancy's Corner guest. She's been quoted as saying, I don't know the rules, so I can't break the rules of quilting. 
With that free spirit approach, she creates amazing fabric art with raw edge applique. Please welcome Lola Jenkins from Oklahoma City, who joins us via Skype. Well, hello, Nancy. Thank you. You're welcome, Lola. Good to see you again in person and person via Skype and to tell our viewers about your amazing artwork that you started doing not that long ago. Tell us when you started. Well, I actually started in 2004, but I did very little. And I didn't do that much in five or six. <laughs> it's in 2007 that I decided to get serious about it. And serious you are. Uh, I'd like to sh start by showing our viewers your college portrait of yourself, I assume, and uh, an amazing realism in your quilts. And you use raw edge applique, correct? Yes, I do. I love raw edge. It's the easy way to go. And you start with a photograph and then explain the process that you use. I usually start with the photograph. Once I get the photograph, I use some type of software manipulation uh, program mm -hmm. in order to be able to get it posterized. Then I blow it up the size that I want it. I lay it on top of a, a light box and I trace the image to the fabric. And from there, I just cut out pieces. What I find so amazing about your quilts is that you have the, the hues of fabric, even though they're not, you wouldn't see that in real life, they look so real when you look at the image. For example, this image of Malcolm X, um, you have a variety of colors in hair, skin, eyes, shirt, and they're fabrics, but some are prints and some are solids. Your artwork is phenomenal, is what I'm trying to say. Well, thank you very much. I like doing realistic portraits without using realistic skin tone fabrics. Mm -hmm. I believe that it gives it a whole lot more interest. It has a lot of energy. And then you, in addition, use some free motion quilting, sometimes very sp specific and sometimes very random. Yes, I do. Um, the majority of the time, I'm random. I start off with an idea uh, when I start quilting and I just whatever happens at the moment happens <laughs> and I just go for it sometimes I I do overkill or overdrive and sometimes I just do a little like a person would do stitch in a ditch type of thing sure well I like your overdrive uh, uh, analogy then the next quilt many faces uh, you have an interesting story about that quilt this is a face of just one individual but in many different poses. Uh, yes, it is. Um, the idea that I came up with is we never really get to know someone even though we think we, uh, we think we know them. So this is what happens. They have many different faces. So <laughs> I take one individual and I did them in a whole bunch of different colors to represent the many faces that we put on before others. And I love the way that they're just overlapped and intertwined. It's such a, it's such a pleasure to look at and, and study the, the faces on them. When we talked earlier, you shared with me that you learned something from a landscape quilting show that Natalie Sewell and I did many years ago. And you want to share that with our viewers too? Absolutely. I learned that you can get a variety of quilting tools from Office Depot. <laughs> and one of those tools is whiteout. I love the whiteout pen. I use it for everything. I use it for eyes, for shadows, uh, or highlights. I use it, I have used it for the teeth. I've used it for lips. I used it uh, for arm and, and in other places of portraits in order for me to either get a highlight or shadow. Okay. So a little dab of that white office white out really works well on fabric and I know personally it stays there for a long time Ish. for a long time Ish. Yeah. well you're an amazing artist and a, a variety the variety of fabrics that you include in each piece from prints to solids to batiks that's your palette correct yes it is I believe in using a whole bunch of different fabrics and I use the fabric the way most painters use paint so the fabric is my paint. Well, Lola, don't quit. Just keep sending me images, and maybe we'll have you back again to show your, your new creations. Thank you for joining us. Well, thank you for inviting me, and I'll look forward to coming back. Thanks, Lola.
If you'd okay. like more information about Lola Jenkins' artwork, please go to our website, nancyzeman.com, and click under Nancy's Corner. You'll find information on Lola and all our other guests. Also at nancyzeman.com, you can watch 52 of the most current Sewing with Nancy programs and the Nancy Cor Nancy's Corner interviews. Thanks for joining us today. Bye for now. Nancy has written a fully illustrated book entitled So Simple with Rectangles and Squares that includes all the information from this three-part series. It's $14.99 plus shipping and handling. To order the book, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com slash 2801. Order item number BK2801, So Simple with Rectangles and Squares. To pay by check or money order, call the number on the screen for details. Visit Nancy's website at nancyseaman.com to see additional episodes, Nancy's blog, and more. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman has been brought to you by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Studios, Clover, Amazing Designs, and Class A Needles. Closed captioning funding provided by Pellon. Sewing with Nancy is a co-production of Nancy Zeman Productions and Wisconsin Public Television.